I followed her. I got home early, turned the corner and saw her red Chevy Nova pulling out of the driveway. Well, maybe she was going to the supermarket and I could step up behind and surprise her while she was squeezing cantaloupes. Hi, honey. And all that shit. So we drive on through these suburban streets and I hang back a bit, keep a car or two between us, playing my little game. And it starts to feel jumpy in the pit of my stomach. But I keep going. I spot her blonde head every now and then, see her small hand flick a cigarette out the window. She smokes parliaments. Now it's getting dark and I'm starting to wonder where the hell she's going when she takes the entry ramp onto the highway. Maybe some emergency, like her mom's sick or something. But she isn't driving fast, just steady. I want to turn off and let those taillights disappear into the dark. There's an exit coming up and I don't take it. And we drive on, heading out of town, running by weedy railroad yards, abandoned mills, some swallows bank against the darkening sky and I start thinking again of the falling people who fill my dreams. Every night, they fly in my head, spinning over and over in midair on their endless way down. An old man, his skinny arms spread wide, plunges toward me, the mountain peak he's dropped from in the distance above him. His hair and eyebrows are white with frost. Then a girl flies by him, falling from a roller coaster from the top of the big dip. Pretty legs in the air, the lace of her slip, the wooden timbers with their peeling white paint a complex geometric background to her tailspin. They make a harsh whistling sound as they rush through the air and it fades as they fall away from me. And again I see the taillights of her car as we hit the airport strip. Rows of fast food joints, outlet stores, motels, fly and miss. A clean towel to every customer. She takes the off-ramp, turns a corner, and I'm caught by the light. When I make the turn, I see her empty car sitting quietly in the parking lot of the Key Motel. I can see into the lit office. Nobody's there. She must have gone into one of the rooms. If I just turn around now and go home, none of this will have happened. I step into the parking lot, put my hand on the hood of her car. It's warm. I look at the row of motel room doors. I step quietly up to the first one, press my ear to the wood, and listen. One of the best party men in the state till I fucked up this hand. Look at it. Thing won't even close. I've been married once. I give her the goddamn house, all the furniture. Most of it was damn near new. I didn't want nothing. Then I figured first time ain't my mistake, second time would be. And what's the use of buying a cow, huh, when you can get the cat? 99% of the goddamn women, they're all over you. Shack up with them two, three at a time, you get tired of them, leave. Shit, if you can't get along, piss on it. Keep gas in the car and a hundred dollar bill taped up in the spare. That's the way I believe in it, huh? Say I'm just somewhere, waiting for a tree to fall on me, and she walks on up. Now I got an ass pocket full of money, and so we get a fifth. Next thing you know, she says, hey, let's go someplace, so we get in the car. Next thing we think about is where, but we don't think about it till we're on the highway doing 70. Where you going and you figure after this next drink you'll figure out something. And by that time, the empty flies out the window. Hey, I'm no alcoholic, man. I can take it or leave it, but I always take it. 
<laughs> and the entire show loaded onto this steamer, the Royal Tar, to get us down from Nova Scotia over to Brunswick, Maine. We were carrying a brass band, horses, two camels, a mogul, the elephant, a water buffalo, two lions, and a pelican. Wouldn't you know it? The fucking boilers overheat, some timbers start, and the ship catches fire, and the crew can't beat it back. They lower the lifeboats, but the sea is calm, and we can see the shoreline in the distance, so everyone's fairly cool. But the animals smell the smoke, and they panic. They're wild, and there's no handling them. So we set them all loose, and we lower away, leave them on the burning ship, hoping they'll swim for it. The last lifeboat is leaving the ship's side when Mogul the elephant appears at the rail. He balances there for a moment, and then he sort of falls into the air, does a slow somersault down, and he breaks the lifeboat to splinters. Mogul's body washed up on shore a few days later on a goddamn public beach. Hell of a party. Every animal in the menagerie was lost. I heard that when the horses jumped overboard, they just swam round and round the burning ship until they became exhausted and sank, instead of making for the shore just a few miles away. Dumb animals. Box of Fab 50 extra strength Tylenol Tampax jar of Vaseline, box of these Mr. Salted Pretzels, carton of Merit 100s, four bananas, your two beers, Nescafe, cream, spinach, cream, carrots, and this other jar of mush. That's it. Hey, it's not like we're going to be here forever. Half this shit's going to go in the back seat tomorrow, be all over the carpet. I got this newspaper at the checkout. <laughs> Listen to this. This one-legged guy had a pet beaver and it ate his wooden leg off while he was sleeping. Next morning, went to stand up, he just fell over. Seems <laughs> like you and me were doing life on the installment plan. Ten days now, and fifteen days there, and ten days later. She sleep in there? If you ever change your mind about leaving, leaving me behind, oh, bring it to me, bring your sweet loving, bring it on home to me, you know I'll always be your slave, till I'm
I didn't feel anger or pain or sorrow or release. What's done is done. Same old story. Nothing new under the sun. I don't think I'll go home. I think I'll just keep driving. still spin over and over down through my head. That man's been falling so long he's calm as he whistles down. As if the fall will never end. Nothing above or below him but the sky. But after falling through the evening for some hours, at last he sees below the glimmer of tiny lights. Then his calmness leaves him, and as his clothes stream from him in whistling shreds, he sees the key motel below. She's in there. Of course she's still in there. Her car is parked in the lot. His cries come closer and closer as he hurtles toward the ground. What the hell? Come into this world bare ass, and go out and might have a suit on, and that's the only difference. So I'm hungry. Must have been driving for a while. I guess I'll stop and uh, eat something. Well, there's a place. The Wagon Wheel. I pull over. Well, I'll go in in a minute. For now, I'll just sit here. <laughs> 